Marimo has a new feature that allows you to interact with an LLM from within the Marimo notebook. You can click this little icon over here with a little robot, and when you do, you get this chat interface. This is really nice because it means that you no longer have to switch browser tabs in order to access an LLM, but this feature is also tightly integrated with the notebook, so there's a couple of utilities that are worth discussing. The first thing to show, though, is just the fact that you can ask it to write some code for you. So, for example, you could say, write me a function that can generate the Fibonacci sequence. So this generated a few things. It generated some explaining text, but it also generated this code block over here. From here, what you can do is you can go ahead and copy it and paste it where you like, but there is also this very useful add to notebook button that's just gonna take that function and add that as a cell onto the notebook. So great. What I am also just gonna go ahead and do here is call this function just to confirm that it works. And that looks good. So this was an example of generated code going into the notebook, but you should also know that the notebook itself is also passed along as context for questions that you might want to ask inside of the chat interface. So as a little silly demo, let's call this function foo now. And now I could go ahead and ask, what does the function foo do in my notebook? Question mark. And when I look at the response, I also see something that I would expect. It is able to indeed inspect the contents of the function and it's able to give you a bit of an explainer on what is happening internally. But the main point that's important to observe here is that this notebook itself is also part of the prompt, so to say. So you can ask questions about code that you've written yourself, and you can also expect the code that's generated to also maybe reuse some of the code that you've already written. So we just saw that we were able to interact with functions, but we can also interact with data frames and tables. And we're also able to refer to a table using apostrophe, and then there's an autocompletion. So we can see that it's able to detect a specific data frame. And from here, I could also ask it questions that are related to that. So I could maybe do something like, what are some interesting aggregations to perform on this data set? And I can see that it's able to understand some things about the column names. And here I can also ask it to uh, write the code for the first suggestion. The one about weight by diet. Once again, some code is being generated and I could copy this into a cell over here, but what I could also do is I could ask it to write this as SQL instead. Add to notebook, run it, and there we go. This chat feature is relatively new, but I have found it already to be quite useful, if only because it saves me a switch to another tab in my browser and then back again. Now, a few extra features. If you hit this little clock icon over here, you can actually inspect previous chats that you've had. So there is a little bit of history that you can also rely on. And you can also start a completely new chat by hitting this plus symbol. But there are also some settings to just be kind of aware of. If you go to the user settings, in particular to this AI section over here, then you can see that there are a couple of things that you can configure. The main thing to configure is your AI key. I'm using OpenAI in this particular case, but you can also use other providers. And then when you scroll to the bottom, you can also specify the model that you are interested in using. And there's a fair amount of models to pick from. When you open up the selection menu, there's a couple of options to pick from. Some of them take longer, some of them are a bit quicker, but you can imagine that the output that you'll get back is heavily dependent on the model that you pick here. Now, a final hint, if you're interested in using this feature to its fullest potential, there are these extra rules that you can add. And this is extra context that will be added to the prompt. This can be particularly useful if you're interested in working on a specific stack. In my case, for example, I really do prefer Polars over Pandas, and I also really do prefer Altair over Matplotlib. Any preference that you can describe can go in here, and this should help steer the LLM in the right direction. As always, do remember that LLMs are just a little bit experimental, they won't be perfect all the time, but if you're interested in doing more with LLMs in Marimo, just know that this chat interface is now a feature that we've properly added, and if you have any feedback, do let us know.